Once there was a poor woman who lived in the dirty slums of a large city. Poverty is all she knew. Her friends invited her to take a vacation to the ocean. She'd never seen the ocean before, and when she saw the waves, tears began streaming down her face. Her friends asked her why she was crying. She pointed to the water and said, it's the only thing I've ever seen that there was enough of. As followers of Jesus, we want to grow. We long for deeper transformation in our hearts and lives. But sometimes we forget that God has already given us everything we need for life and godliness and fullness of joy in Jesus. And so we look to other sources for spiritual growth. We look to books and seminars. We develop lists of rules to keep. We look to dreams and visions, heightened spiritual experience. In the first century, the Apostle Paul warned a whole group of Christians about these kinds of additions to the person and work of Jesus Christ. This letter, the letter to the Colossians, is short, but it delivers a roundhouse kick to religion. It was written to warn believers against looking to anything or anyone other than Jesus Christ for wisdom, salvation, or spiritual life. In sounding this warning, Paul gives us some of the highest, richest, most exalted words about Jesus Christ found anywhere in the New Testament. It gives us street-level instruction on how the faith of ordinary believers is meant to work in everyday life. Colossians instructs us about prayer and ministry, about our freedom and identity in Christ, about spiritual renewal and life together in the Christian community. In Colossians, we learn how to put sin to death and how to be examples to outsiders in both word and deed. But Paul never adds to the gospel. Instead, he works it deeper into our hearts, reminding us again and again that Christ is all we need. My new book, Christ All Sufficient, is an exposition of Colossians, a practical step-by-step -step guide through this letter that unpacks the sufficiency and the supremacy of Jesus Christ. There will always be competitors to Christ. The church is always in danger of being seduced by the siren song of something more. Rules, laws, dreams or visions that promise something in addition to Jesus Christ. But we can never say it too often. Christ is all sufficient. A thousand schemes and to-do lists may threaten to enslave you, but Christ died and rose to set you free. And he is enough.